the idea of tragedy as has been going on is this that it has some features what are those features if we go by the aristotelian view yes in a structure of the plays of tragedy okay see we have to keep in mind that the play was written in 20th century 1935 we have to keep in mind that the play was written with a purpose okay what happens if i have to define a tragedy keeping in mind the aristotelian classical a uh, kind of idea shakespearean view as well to some extent yes you have written that a noble person who suffers a change of fortune due to his tragic flaw okay tragic flaw this tragic flaw talks about uh, what tragic tra his tragic flaw i mean uh, probably it means that the tragic flaw with the character mm. okay the aristotelian idea is that or interpretation of aristotle's uh, idea of tragedy has been seen as a performance which is of high quality which contains some noble person noble character and this noble character is one who falls victim to his own hamartia that is error in judgment hamartia error in judgment or miscalculation that kind of thing has been interpreted hamartia okay. hamartia has to do not with the character primarily but with the plot you see aristotle mentions the significance of plot as the soul he finds plot to be the soul of a play he goes to the extent of identifying identifying the play plays possibility without a character but not without a plot okay so hamartia has lot to do with the plot because plot comes first if we take un shakespearean way aristotelian way the significance of plot <clears throat> so miscalculation of what error in judgment what kind of judgment see this error is in judgment is that is something for which the character is not fully responsible but yes to some extent the character may be held responsible for example see you are driving a bike you are correctly driving it on the lane on which you should be in the lane on which you should be but still though there is no fault of yours due to some hole on the road or due to the rash driving of some other person on the road you fall prey you become a victim of accident you fall prey to accident so this is something for which you are not completely responsible but yes you neglected the hole the possibility of hole on the road the possibility of other persons rash driving okay one example the other example is this one two brothers are there in a forest one of them is 
aiming to shoot at a bird, suppose. The other brother is on the opposite direction of the brother. And in between, some snake comes and attacks the person who is aiming at the bird. Because of that bite of the snake, the direction of the goal shifts from the bird to the brother and the shot takes place. Both of them die. The mistake was what? Not in his intention, but yes, negligence of surrounding. Possibility of some other bees appearance, reptiles appearance, that kind of thing. For which the person is not solely responsible, but yes, the possibilities are to be kept in mind. This is something for which the character is not completely responsible, but yes, it was in the within the plot therefore hamartia in aristotelian way is to be interpreted this way i believe okay now so let's start only from here then so do we find anything in the plot of the play? This is one question we have to keep in mind. Whether Hemarshia is there within the plot or not. Okay. Now, in place of Hemarshia going to Shakespearean tragedy. Okay. Shakespeare did not give his theory of tragedy or comedy, but he wrote tragedies, comedies problem plays and from there and from there critics had been attempting to draw Shakespearean theory as Izzy Bradley one of the Shakespeare scholars says about Shakespeare's tragedies that Tragic flaw with the character is found in Shakespeare's tragedies. That is to say, the character themselves are responsible to the great extent okay, for their downfall. You see Macbeth. I believe you would have read Macbeth. Macbeth's downfall takes place because of his ambition. He is over ambitious. Othello fails because of jealousy. He is jealous. King Lear, what is the drawback with the character of King Lear? The drawback with the character of King Lear is this that. He loves being fond, confined to the words only. Okay. So likewise, in other plays of Shakespeare, we find what? That majorly the responsibility of the protagonist downfall lies on them, especially. Okay. Now, let's shift to our play. And before that, something more. See, Aristotelian idea of tragedy is that a tragedy contains or a tragedy is Imitation of men in action or man in action or human beings in action. Imitation of men in action. Imitation 
from life. Imitation of what? Ultimately, imitation of life. Okay. Imitation of action. And the action must be in a unity. In place of more than one plot, only one plot should go. C, B, C, in many of the plays by Shakespeare. One example is there. You see, your King Lear probably. Uh, yes, you you have read King Lear. In King Lear, we have two plots. That is also a tragedy. But we have two plots. One major plot, the other subplot. Okay. One is of King Lear and the other is of Gloucester. King Lear and Gloucester family, I should say. Lear's family and Gloucester family. Okay. So, what Aristotle maintains that there should be unity of action, that is, preferably only one plot should be there. And in case there appears to be some other undercurrent plot, that should be integrated to the plot, the main plot, in such a manner that in case the other plot is dissolved, the whole plot would be spoiled. Okay, so this is this aspect is also to be kept in mind while focusing on the play. Do we have unity of plot, unity of action, or not in this play? This is form oriented approach right now. Yes, the plot is having only one story. The plot is having only one story, and that is all. Thomas Beckett. Okay. Then imitation. That is to say, it should not be completely fictional, imaginative. And we find on that ground the play is very close to the real world. That is to say, it attempts or it imitates Beckett's life. Okay. Then, unity of action, that is done. Unity of place. We see that, yes, the unity of place is also there. Whatever takes place, that takes place inside the cathedral. Okay or nearby cathedral only, very close to cathedral, because even our chorus, our choruses are moving closer to the, they have moved closer to the cathedral, okay? In the very beginning we read, okay? Unity of place is maintained, unity of action is maintained. Now unity of time, so we see it, opening on 2nd of December 1170 and goes up to 29th of December 1170. Again, a matter of interpretation. One day, because what Aristotle says, one son in his theory, in his idea of that uh, unity of time, that has also been interpreted differently in different interpretations by different people. Okay. But still we see that if, suppose, we can accept that, yes, it is not one day's story, but it is not at the same time exceeding one month. Okay. And even there, though it opens on second, even there we find the focus on the last few days of Thomas Beckett. Is the arrival there? Yes. And especially 29, 28, 27th, we are talked about that. We are not shown there, but yes, we are told next day, next day, next day kind of thing. Okay. Especially the 
focus the the major focus is on the last day of the life of the cat so in form it appears yes very close to the classical or aristotelian idea of tragedy okay coming to theme now a tragedy has to give catharsis by means of what what is catharsis at first again different interpretations but in the world of academia we have taken it as purgation of harmful emotions harmful emotions what are those harmful emotions pity and fear okay and that is possible when harmful emotions when can we get that possibility of catharsis purging of harmful emotions when we have sympathetic or empathetic bond with the characters performing on the stage when there is some kind of identification with the characters performing on the stage okay so catharsis this again i want your response please respond ah uh, how much you find yourself moved when you watch or when you yes in watching should be a better term though uh, we are reading it the assassination of beckett are you moved if yes are you moved the same way as you get moved to see the death of lear death of uh, the shakespearean character death of classical protagonist yes or no okay to me when it comes to me i am not moved that way that is to say kyun because beckett beckett is beckett belongs to another section of society then to which i belong that is not the only reason though he belongs to the other strata of society that is religious strata of society he is an archbishop had he been shown with those limitations those emotions with which ordinary people are probably then it could have appealed me more that is to say this is a sensation but yes there is no denying that the assassination of a person who is all alone unarmed gives us a moving heart we are moved to see that of which the night also state that this appears to be unjustified that a person without arms is being murdered by four assassinators four knights yes this is the thing which moves us this is the thing where we find injustice okay now 
how to define tragedy can we define tragedy yes what is tragedy tragedy is to me something where poetic justice is denied the lack of the outcome of the lack of poetic justice gives us tragedy that is to say if a person is villainous and he gets a punishment he is killed we are not moved you don't have any uh, pity for that person okay but if a person who is virtuous suffers we find ourselves moved pity arises pity arises okay so in the case of archbishop thomas pickett we get moved in a different manner and the reason is this that he is different from the tragic characters present in secular plays non religious plays this play is a i can term it a christian tragedy not aristotelian tragedy not shakespearean tragedy not a tragedy with traditional headings completely but when it comes to its a theme i categorize it as a christian tragedy kyo because the theme concerns martyrdom the theme concerns christianity now i have taken up this point of christianity so tragedy must have a hero tragic hero and this tragic hero is someone who is somewhere who stands somewhere between vice and virtue okay vice and virtue who succumbs to his misfortune due to some hamartia so two things are there number 1 we have to discuss the tragic protagonist features and then misfortune what is misfortune whether there is any misfortune in this play or not i am terming it again as christian tragedy okay now see coming to tragic heroes in traditional plays as have been uh, as has been uh, interpreted that a tragic hero is seen born of high state of society nobility someone on whose shoulder depends the fate of a community a race a nation a society okay then the second thing yes do we have that kind of feature in this play let us see our archbishop is not born of high state of society as has been mentioned by the pre by the by the knights if you see he has been identified as cheap side fellow okay cheap street fellow then the second thing is he someone on whose fate depends the fate of a community time and again from the very beginning till the end we see that yes he is one who is leading 
who is one of the leaders of the religious community the religious section of the society of of christian society okay his death what kind of results his death could be bringing see from the very beginning we see when we talk about that uh, pity and fear chorus is having that pity and fear from the very beginning from the chorus we get to that pity and fear okay we are pitying for some some uh, death that is especially is uh, possibility of the death of uh, archbishop fear of what fear of violation of peace fear of that non violence sorry violence fear of non violence non violence being broken okay so fear of violence is there fear of murder is there pity with the person about to be murdered is there we see that not only we smell that not only with the chorus but also after the arrival of the knights we find that kind of apprehension and again we see that uh, when the cathedral is kept open while the priest insist on barring that the archbishop insist on unbarring the door okay so the fear is also continuously creeping us there then uh, the protagonist in a tragedy achieves monumentality okay monumentality how is this monumentality achieved and what is meaning of achieving monumentality monuments are something which draw the attention of everyone which become of high significance great significance which are kept maintained slash alive for all the times okay you see in christianity we have paradise lost or leave that paradise lost is also a christian epic we can say epic with christian theme but everywhere you see across across the religious boundaries you see in ramayana we have ram the protagonist okay in bible we have jesus christ okay jesus christ is protagonist is hero as well okay hero so now the question is what kind of heroism is there in jesus christ does he wage war does he took arms hmm does he fight no different kind of life change in attitude towards life tolerance suffering suffering okay so jesus christ suffers for the sake of humanity for the sake of humanity he suffers he dies likewise and he becomes illustrated as hero he is the hero okay likewise becket is also there he suffers from suffering what is achieved monumentality from suffering monumentality is achieved he suffers and becomes monumental in time thomas becket okay and the other aspect what is suffering in the case of 
in the case of uh, cricket we see this is not that he is suffering here when he is being murdered nay this is not suffering his passivity is his action not to work not to resist going with the will of god is his act okay now see he suffers when does he suffer then he suffers for 7 years when he was under excitement he suffered there for 7 years in france his suffering was being away from his people okay his suffering was being deprived of his authority what authority his authority you see that co king is crowned and it was to be done by whom it should have been performed by the archbishop of canterbury he suffers there again so what happens that these kinds of physical material worldly suffering he has now but when reversal and recognition takes place that is philippicia and an agnorisis i'm taking the terms from aristotle what is peripatia reversal as aristotle says that a reversal is required in a tragedy so what reversal is there reversal of thomas becket to canterbury he was exiled he was under excitement but when the play opens we see him reverting back okay suffering reversal and then an agnorisis that is what from ignorance to knowledge from ignorance to knowledge in that we find the four tempters helpful enough you see that the first to three tempters are not affecting him in the least but the fourth tempter makes him realize his mistake makes him realize that he was proud of his authority as the archbishop of canterbury okay so we now i will take you to some some examples you see what happens in rex edipus in rex edipus when we see that the soothsayer comes back to edipus and tells edipus that he was the son told him that he was the son of uh, laius the king whom edipus killed and laius's wife who was the mother of edipus had become his queen that is he had married his mother unknowingly without knowing that and had uh, two sons two daughters and all. so what happens that uh, he feels a kind of sin on his part Okay, so reversal of what? Reversal of the soothsayer, the person who knew the truth, and not only that, with the reversal of the person, recognition is also taking place. Recognition of self identity. Okay, Oedipus gets to know of his real identity. so what happens here because it is a not a non religious non christian play performance it is a christian play so here we have our protagonist reverting back to 
cathedral to, to, to Canterbury. And there, after he has reached there, he finds what? He gets to know, to recognize the real purpose of his life or the real role of his own self as the archbishop slash he realizes that there is a fate there is a design of god his recognition of this design of god which no one can alter he realizes see i will say that this is something spiritual and philosophical element not some fact, not some history element, no identity issue, that identity has been found out. Nay, what he realizes, what he recognizes is the design, the universal pattern of God. Okay. Had he, and because he recognizes the universal pattern of God, he says that, because of that, that death has to come someday or the other. The point is this, danger should not come. I am near death, but I am away from danger. Okay, so he makes himself ready for death. So who suffers then? His suffering is over, okay? His suffering is over. In fact, he suffered when till he was not familiar with what with the pattern with the design of god and being yes yeah so being uh sorry i started reading something so yes when he becomes a familiar with the design of god he accepts that there is nothing which can alter the design of god and being a being a priest or archbishop, it is his duty. The sole duty of his is to go with the pattern of God, to go with the design of God. Okay. And therefore, now he is free from that fourth temptation because he realizes there, yes, that he can die, he can achieve martyrdom, he can become a saint, but there would be a sin because that would be with the intention of pride. Okay. It would have been a kind of, his death would have been tempted. So the death would have gone vain, a noble cause for a noble reason. Okay. A noble action for a noble cause should be there. And therefore he gets free. So now we see that he ultimately is assassinated. He dies, is murdered, but is free from that sin. He becomes, he achieves martyrdom. Okay. And uh, this way he becomes, he can be treated as hero. And the play can be termed a Christian tragedy in place of classical Greek. Aristotelian, Shakespearean, modern, Jobi Nam De Sakte. Up in place of that, the play can be termed a Christian tragedy. Yeah. A modern Christian, in fact, no need of modern, a Christian tragedy. I will identify the play. I will categorize the play as the Christian tragedy. Okay. Up to here, I could.